Hi, welcome back to the channel where I figure out what I'm gonna say two minutes before I actually try to shoot a video. I'm Chris Burns from Techie Gurus. I don't know if you care about any of this information, but I'm gonna give it to you anyway because smart business people have told me this is what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> so, yesterday I attended the 25th uh, anniversary of the InfraGuard Great Great Lakes uh, conference. So it's in it's here in Michigan. Uh, it was all virtual. Still can't go on on uh, in person. But you know what? Uh, we're getting close to where that's going to change. So if you don't know what InfraGuard is, I, I made a post yesterday on Facebook and LinkedIn about it. And basically, it's a partnership between the FBI and the private sector, mo uh, basically individuals, where we try to protect the U.S. critical infrastructure. Now. I'm gonna read you, there's 16 sectors to the US critical infrastructure. I'll blast these off real quick. I have a good memory. I can't remember this stuff, so you're gonna get me to, uh, to read this for you. So, agricultural and food, chemical, commercial facilities, communications, critical manufacturing, dams, defense industrial base, emergency services, energy, financial services, government facilities, healthcare and public health, information technology, that's where we play, I play, uh, that's the sector I belong to. Uh, nuclear reactors, material, and waste. That one sounds way better than mine. Uh, transportation systems and water and waste water systems. So one of the things that they do is they, they put out uh, information that we can't talk about publicly. They put out about information that we can talk about publicly. So yesterday was a public event. Um, anybody could have registered. I should have actually probably advertised that. I didn't. I apologize. Next year I'll do it. But they had some really cool speakers and uh, some really cool uh, agenda items. So the idea behind it is to bring in experts, bring in CISOs, so Chief Information Security Officers, from major organizations and have them talk about that, um, talk about what's going on, uh, what they're seeing out there. They also brought in FBI, Department of Homeland Security, people like that to speak about this. And the overwhelming message from everybody is be prepared, have a plan. You have to have a plan because this is going to happen to, to everybody at some point. And what they meant by that is ransomware, attacks, hacking, things like that. They're, they're not there to, spell the, to, to really spread fear, even though that's kind of what happens. There's also hope. There's hope because there is InfraGuard. There's a bunch of us out there that will help you. You just have to ask for it and you have to be willing to, to go down that road with us. So, uh, let me just cover a couple of them. Um, one of my favorite ones was uh, there was an FBI panel on Insider Threat and Cyber Threat Overview. It was cool. They're kind of going over like what's, what they're seeing today. Uh, they didn't really cover the, the recent news, but they because these obviously were pre-planned. But it was really cool seeing the FBI come together and actually talk about everything. Uh, the the there's two really good evening seminars or a little late afternoon into the evening. Uh, the first one at 3:30 was Surviving Ransomware: Lessons Learned in Manufacturing Environment. And they had the CISOs on there from Ford, GM, GM, American Axle, Lear, and Ford. And they talked about how they've had to combat ransomware, how they have to combat cybersecurity threats all the time. And they talked about like what we could do, um, or what we, being security professionals, and what companies can do to protect themselves. You know, GM and Ford specifically, because they allow so many suppliers to actually come into their network, they're actually under probably more risk than most companies because if those suppliers get breached, that then translates to their business. And, you know, this is, that's auto manufacturing, but that really applies anywhere, right? If you're a CPA, you have access to financial records. If you're medical, um, you know, obviously you have medical records, which, you know, there's the health and human services, there's a wall of shame, things like that. We can get into that later, but uh, the big one was they brought in FireEye's uh, CSO, and FireEye is a hu huge cybersecurity company. They they help countries with ransomware and like huge enterprises. Uh, they were actually part of the SolarWinds breach that happened late last year into this year, and they actually spelled out a timeline because the funny part about it was the way they caught it in their environment was a manual process. It wasn't automated. It was humans doing a check, and what it was is there's something called DUA. It's multi-factor authentication. I've talked about it before. And every time somebody adds a device that's DUO authorized, it goes to their security operations center and they call the user to verify. Well, that's how they caught the that's how they caught that something was going on. That's the first breadcrumb. A user had a device added to their 
uh, Duo account, and they called the user, and he was like, I didn't do that. And FireEye was like, whoa, the, the, their security operations center, the SOC, was like, oh. They started looking into it. That breadcrumb led to them detecting and actually kind of breaking down the SolarWinds supply chain attack that affected Microsoft, Cisco, FireEye themselves, and a bunch of government agencies as well, and other large corporations. There was over 18,000 companies were actually uh, infected with that. So that was like a really cool session to end it. And there was some speed dating at the end and stuff like that where they kind of uh, gave away some prizes and, and we got to chat. So cool day, really awesome event. And um, I, I can't say it enough if you're here in Michigan next year or your local InfraGuards actually you know, throughout the United States, look for their annual conference, go to it. Uh, here it was like $25. I don't know what it is in other states, but just kind of go to it and, and really pay attention and collaborate. Even if you can only send one person from your company, it's, it's really eye-opening to be able to communicate with other people in the area and around Michigan and also with FBI, Department of Homeland Security and some of the big time CISOs at executive, um, and the executive level at large enterprises. So, all right, I probably rambled on a little bit too long about that, but let's get some other news. JBS, the food uh, processor, the meat processor from, from last week, they ended up paying $11 million ransom. I, I Posted a, a link on that, I made a comment on it, uh, on my personal stuff on uh, Facebook and, and LinkedIn, but really what it came down to is they paid $11 million to basically tell the ransomware attackers, the threat actors, to stop attacking them so they could recover. Because in the middle of recovering, they weren't sure how they got in, and they started negotiating. They had some. They brought in third-party cybersecurity companies and their, their, their insurance companies, and they started negotiating basically to not attack us again. They paid $11 million to not get attacked again. So, you know, in other news, I, I talked about this a little bit before, but Colonial Pipeline, the FBI was able to get back 2.3 out of the $4.4 million in ransom. And the way they were able to do that is the, the hackers had transferred like 64 Bitcoin to a certain wallet. And that wallet, uh, the FBI was able to issue a warrant for and actually confiscate that wallet. So that's why cryptocurrency works. Everything's stored in a wallet and you need to protect the wallet that because if you lose the wallet or lose access to the wallet, you, it's gone. So the FBI was able to do that. Uh, Electronic Arts yesterday, EA. Um, if you're a video game person, EA Sports, they, uh, they have Madden, uh, they do FIFA. FIFA's a huge one and actually this specifically was for FIFA, but they got hacked. It wasn't ransomware, but they got uh, exploited and it sounds like all the source code for FIFA, which is a uh, football or football or soccer uh, game that's pop wildly popular worldwide, uh, the source code got stolen and also some other information. So it looks like they got about 700 gigs of data <laughs> out. And um, right now they're saying it wasn't ransomware. They're saying they were, you know, they got under control and things like that. We'll see. I'm sure more information will come out over the next um, few weeks, especially because they're a public company, so they have to divulge us. So, uh, and then AXA. I talked about them. They were the largest church company over in Europe that uh, decided in France that they weren't going to cover uh, ransom payments anymore, extortion payments. <laughs> Shortly after that, their South, uh, Southeast Asia division got hit with ransomware. And it got worse. They had 10 days to pay them. They could start leaking information. They, The hackers were able to get out three terabytes of information. Yeah, three terabytes. That's, that's a lot to not notice going on your network. And it had medical records. They had state IDs. They had passports. They had customer information, bank accounts. I mean, this is like critical stuff that you do not want to getting out. And I, they haven't announced whether they paid a ransom or anything like that. I'm sure they did because once that information gets leaked, I mean, you know, that's that can be devastating. And I don't know privacy laws in Southeast Asia. You know, EU is different with GDPR. They would be hammered on that, and they'd actually be sued here. But um, yeah, so there's some news, there's some upgrades. Uh, upgrades. I can't even talk today. Updates from Infraguard. Uh, if you want more information about that, let me know. Uh, post down below. Again, I I posted another video uh, yesterday that talked about like the five tips to well six to kind of protect your data that are free or low cost. I could do more of that, or I could go into something deeper. Um, I have some ideas about what I want to talk about. Like, what should should you really pay for IT? Because that's really important. Uh, it's something I think people miss the mark on. They think that everything is low cost or free, and that's the reality. It's not the case anymore, especially now with the, the threats that are out there and the risks that you have in your business. But yeah, just comment down below, let me know, and uh, I'll make another video. So cool, until next week or whenever I decide that I randomly want to post a video, uh, stay safe out there and I'll, I'll see you later.